Welcome, 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 welcome. <laughs> shout out to you, Facebook. Shout out to YouTube. Shout out to all of my new subscribers over the last 90 days. I appreciate your support. I certainly appreciate your engagement. Shout out to Michelle Ship on Facebook, who has been a loyal member of my Facebook chat page ever since I began two years ago. Shout out to you. I appreciate you and I also appreciate your engagement. Um, I will tell you, folks, like I've always said uh, in every stream, it's not about agreeing with everything I say. Nah, that would make for a very boring. <laughs> that would make for a very boring uh, stream, don't you think? If you agreed, if everybody agreed with what you said, wouldn't that make wouldn't that make it boring? I think it gets pretty interesting when you get different points of views, you know, but uh, what I find very interesting is that even when you get a different point of view and you, you give a little pushback with that point of view that you disagree with, you're never given the same grace. <laughs> you're never given the same grace um, to push back with many individuals women in general and uh black women in particular you have a very difficult task ahead of you and i'm sure many of you brothers can uh relate to what i'm saying you know and uh but at the end of the day it still makes the conversation very interesting um it gives a little flavor to the to the conversation you know when you uh, when you encounter individuals that disagree with what you say, <laughs> you know, um, there's, again, like I said, uh, it's not about me being right. It's not about me expecting all of you who listen to my streams to think the way I think. No, not at all. Um, that would make us Siamese twins. And I think Siamese twins even have different uh, thought processes. They think differently, even though they're connected at the neck. They still think differently because they have two separate brains. I think that's what gives a lot of intrigue and makes the world interesting because everybody doesn't agree. And that's what that's what gives birth to conversations. Um, for at least the last five years or maybe even more, I could be I could be short stopping it. Um, men have been having conversations. Um, and before I go any further, for those of you that hear me, I want to, I want to give a sound check. Uh, how's the music and everything is good. Can you hear me? Well, if you can put a one in the chat, put a one in the chat. If you can hear me well, if you can hear me well, put a one in the chat. If you can hear me well, put a one in the chat. Shout out to Fred. Fred, shout out to you, man. <laughs> shout out to you for getting on the stream tonight, my brother. I don't see your face. If you can cam up, that'd be fantastic. Cam up if you can. Turn your camera on. But thank you for getting on the stream tonight, my brother. I appreciate you. And uh, I trust that everyone has had a fantastic afternoon. I mean, it's it's been a rainy one. I don't know where you are in the world right now, but uh, where I am, it rained like you wouldn't believe. <laughs> uh, it rained like you wouldn't believe. I see you, Fred. Give you a few minutes. I got you, brother. Um, it rained like you wouldn't believe. Um, and then it just stopped, you know? It's one of those monsoons that come down real hard, real fast. And then it kind of ends very quickly. So, and from what I understand, my wife told me that tomorrow is supposed to rain even harder tomorrow. <laughs> I don't know. I got some things to do. I got some business to take care of. So I'm, I'm hoping that I don't get uh, caught in any flash floods. So you guys pray for me. <laughs> you know, because uh, I hate driving in flash floods. <laughs> 
And uh, I'm a very good driver, but I hate driving in flash floods because you never know when you're going to encounter the flood. And then all of a sudden your car is stuck. You know what I mean? Uh, on the side of the road, you know, with the water halfway up to your door. So hopefully it won't be that bad. But I mean, I mean, this is the season we're in. This is spring. So, um, you know, I hope everybody had a good weekend, a good Memorial Day weekend, which we just uh, passed. Hope everybody was safe. Hope you hope you drove and you used your head and you didn't drive while you were highly intoxicated. Hope you didn't do that. And uh, <laughs> and yeah, Fred. No, I'm not going to send you these shades, brother. You you got to give me the shades you have that belong to me, my brother. <laughs> yeah, man. But um, yeah. So you know, um. We had some, uh, I hope you guys, again, as I was saying, I hope you guys enjoyed your holiday. Hope you enjoyed time with your family. Shout out to all of the servicemen in this country who, uh, unfortunately, some of them lost their lives in pursuit of trying to protect this country. Shout out to those of you that are still alive, that survived. Thank you for your service. And that's what Memorial Day is really all about. You know, and uh, I'm not going to get into the politics of it. <laughs> All I am going to say that the the uh, privileges and the freedoms that we that we have in this country. We have to acknowledge the fact that we have a military. We have a military who go into a fight in most cases blind to what they're even fighting for. But they still fight nonetheless. And as a result of that fighting, they lose their lives and they don't get to come back home to their families. They don't get to come back home to their children. They don't get to come back home to their wives. They don't get to come home. And uh, as a result of that, our country is safe. The same position that the police hold in the local cities, regardless of the bad ones that do bad things and we know what we're talking about we're talking about the black men that are uh unalived by law enforcement officers we're not going to get into all of that but i want to say this um don't take the attitude and the the mentality of you know f the police yeah okay oh well if you didn't have them you wouldn't be able to walk outside your front door every day your wives and your children would not be safe in the cities that you live in so salute to all the law enforcement officers who are doing their job, not playing the games, not using uh, these racial tactics and not playing the buffoon, but actually being law enforcement officers. For you, I salute you. And that goes all the way down the line to every law enforcement agency in this country, whether it be FBI, CIA, local law enforcement, state police, and the United States military, all five branches. Salute to you. And with that being said, I am your host, Charles Chambliss. This is another episode of Let's Talk About It Now, of which we intend to do just that. Talk about it. <laughs> we intend to do just that. <laughs> ladies, 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 ladies. Uh, don't get yourself all in a bunch. Just kind of relax and try to hear and listen to understand. Uh, I will tell you this. Let's talk about it now has always been a platform that spoke the truth. Irregardless of whether the medicine went down sweet or whether it went down bitter, it still had to go down. Now, some of you guys, some of you ladies, you spit it up and you wonder why you're still sick. But uh, for those of you that swallowed and ingested the medication, you're seeing the benefits of taking the medicine right now. Why do I say that? Some of you are married right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Some of you changed your attitude. Yeah. Some of you got out of your masculine behavior. Yes. Yes. Some of you learned how to let your man lead. Yes. Some of you actually got into your submissiveness. Some of you adopted traditional behavior as it relates to a woman and a man. Because, again, this is what this is really all about. 
We don't count dates. You've heard me say in previous streams, dating is stupid. I still stand behind dating being stupid. But marriage is where we take score. If you've ever been to a sporting event, a basketball game, the guy can shoot the ball and it can look so well, the form, how he jumped and how he, his form when he released the ball from his hands. Everybody held their breath until what? Until the ball hit the rim and bounced off. Did that shot count regardless of how good it looked? No, it did not. And ladies, likewise. You and your dating escapades don't look good either, especially when it doesn't lead to marriage. If it doesn't lead to marriage, your dating escapades become an air ball, just like a base. That's a, just like a basketball game. It becomes an air ball. That point doesn't count. In baseball, if you swing at a if you swing at a fastball and you don't hit it, you get three chances at that. Many of you have had three chances, i.e. three decades. Many of you are 30 years old and you still have not found yourself anyone's wife. That means you had three strikes up at bat. And yet you still won't acknowledge the fact that there is something wrong with that picture. There is no such thing as a community without marriage. There is no such thing as a community without man, woman, and child. Many of you that have watched my stream in the past and those that do that are watching my stream right now as I speak live, you know in your community you do not see marriages. You know right now in your own personal life, in your own family life, you do not nor have you experienced marriages. And if you have, you've experienced marriages that have failed. How do I know that? Because I am like you. I am like you. And this is, goes out for those of you that think, oh, uh, well, you know, I think Charles hates women. Uh, I think he's gay. Uh, um, uh, I think he's a, uh, his mama black. Uh, he's a misogynist. Uh, uh, I don't want to listen to what this guy has to say. Uh, I will tell you this. I'm, I'm with a fantastic woman that I've been with for 30 years. In fact, she's my moderator. She's been my moderator and has heard every single stream that I've ever done since the day I started. Why do I say that and why is that important? Because I want many of you ladies that are listening to me and under the sound of my voice right now as I speak to understand that I don't speak from a spirit of vitriol. I don't speak from a spirit of anger or hatred for women. Nah, man. I love women, especially ours, uh, you know, black women that share my reflection. I love black women. We are, you are the most beautiful woman on the planet. Oh, that's my opinion. I know some of you may disagree, but <laughs> in my opinion, black women are the most beautiful women on the planet. They're the most beautiful women on the planet in appearance, but over time and during this modern day time, they have become the most ugliest woman. And that's sad. And we have to address that issue. Why? Because you're losing your men. We are losing you. And as a result of losing each other, we are losing our community. Now, we can go to the uh, cancel culture idea. We can go into the modern day mentality of, uh, you know, following your own rule and doing as you will and living your worst life i know you like to call it your best life but i think most women are living their worst life while they disguise it as their best life there is no best life when all you are doing is spending your best years alone and by yourself running up your mileage on your body and then finding yourself at 30 years of age by yourself and even older where you find yourself an example of Vivica Fox. Oh, yeah, we're going to talk about Vivica Fox, too, just for a few seconds. I won't waste a lot of time on Vivica Fox because she's unredeemable. She believes that the way she thinks is the way she should think. Yet she has no children and she's 60. Yet she's at 60 years of age talking about living hot girl summer. Yet she has no husband. Here is a woman at 60, uncovered, unprotected. 
with no accountability to anyone except her own devices. And I will tell you, ladies, for those of you that think that way, that support that mindset and that mentality, you're sentencing not only yourself, but you're sentencing your grandchildren who are females. You're sentencing your nieces who are females. You're sentencing every friend that you have that is a female that you say is your friend. Every female relative who's a cousin. You're sentencing all of them to failure because of your own failure to tell them the truth. Ladies, what is it about the truth that you run from so quickly? that you're unwilling to tell the truth when you know that your outcomes have not been favorable, but yet even un under your unfavorable outcomes, you still refuse to tell the truth. I know what it is. It's that woman code, right? It's that woman code you ladies talk about. That when you're addressed with certain things, that can be backed up with facts, data, and statistics. You argue the facts, even though two plus two still is four, you won't change it. You either accept the two or the four, but it's still four. Even when you're, a, you're presented with the data, you argue the data, you say, well, who gave this data? You argue with the data, you know? One thing about facts, facts is very unforgiving. Facts is very unforgiving and facts are very stubborn. They don't give in to your, uh, your decision to disagree. You understand? If I tell you that it's something is hot and if you touch it, it'll burn you. That's a fact. You can decide, uh, I don't believe you, but if you touch it and you get burned, what will be your excuse then? What would be your excuse? That I forgot to turn the flame off? That I forgot to roll the window up? What exactly is the excuse you'll use to refute what's only fact? Facts are stubborn. They won't change based on my ability or decision to believe it or your decision or ability to believe it. Facts remain what they are. They are stubborn, ladies. They are very stubborn. And because you refuse to listen to facts, explains the outcomes that many of you right now unfortunately are experiencing right now and will continue to experience you know i will tell you um again i want to say this before i go any further shout out to gail for getting on the stream tonight again shout out to fred for getting on the stream tonight and shout out to many of you that get on the stream after it's streamed live I appreciate you. Please, as you come into the building, hit that subscribe button, hit the bell notification so that you receive all notifications for every stream that I do going forward. I will be giving you a lot of information going forward. I've been on a hiatus for probably about three months, uh, but I have been diligently preparing to come back before you. And for those of you that get back with me and for those of you that have rocked with me, even when I was on the hiatus, shout out to all of my new 75 or 80 new subscribers that came on and joined onto my stream and got in, got, got, a, got with the family of let's talk about it now. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. And if you should feel so moved to support this channel, you can support this channel at your own will. I'm asking for nothing but one thing. And you know that one thing I'm asking for? I'm asking for your ear. In specific, I'm asking ladies for your ear. Guys, I'll have streams for you going forward because we need a lot of cleanup too. A lot of us are not even marriage minded. A lot of us are whoremonger males. A lot of us are no earthly good where women are concerned, yet we have complaints we have problems. We have all kinds of issues where women are concerned. So I will be talking to you going forward. So stay tuned. But tonight we're going to talk to the ladies. And I want to talk about something that has become a knee-jerk reaction where most modern women are concerned. It's called whataboutism. Uh, you know about whataboutism, right, ladies? That's that thing you always do when you're presented with something that forces you 
to, to be hold, held accountable. You say, well, what about? What about? What about? What about? You know, you know what about ism, right? <laughs> you know, you know when you're presented with something that you aren't particularly comfortable listening to, you throw what about as a method or a tactic to shut the conversation down or to deflect from the conversation and cause the other individual to really be confused and walk away not even knowing what what the hell just happened because you really never got down to any brass tacks about what the conversation was all about you kind of diverted you threw up some smoke and mirrors and those smoke and mirrors is the religion called what about ism you know and i think that's a deflecting move but when you look at that tactic that's taken it goes in line with the rest of the cousins and relatives of what most modern women do when they don't want to hear something i talked in many of my earlier streams about a thing called sign language shout out to the late kevin samuels he itemized and detailed what those three letters meant. The S meaning shame. The I meaning insult. The G meaning guilt. And the N meaning the insatiable, <clears throat> almost, almost the inability to avoid need to be right. Irregardless of facts irregardless of stats irregardless of data the need to be right has become the most insatiable contagious disease amongst the modern woman when it comes to conversations and talking points that relate to toxic bad behavior where they are concerned where men are having these conversations in pursuit of trying to allow you to become knowledgeable of what they want it's been a really uphill battle i mean when i tell you ladies it's been a struggle it's it, it's an incredible struggle to just get you ladies to even agree on one or two talking points say if there's 15 or 20 talking points it's difficult to get you to agree on one and that's sad that says a lot and it's very telling about the condition that we're in it's very telling one in four which you've always heard me say in many streams one in four of you will marry in a lifetime i don't know how serious you ladies take that when you know that 80 to 85 percent uh quickly approaching 90 percent of women black women in particular homes are headed by them a single mother now if she's a mother it's safe to say that it indicates a man was there I i'm certain you would agree with me on that it's safe to say that a man was there the question is where is he and why did he leave now i know many of you that watch this stream you're going to have a, a list of reasons in my comment section i know you are and i welcome you to write your comments i will respond but i know it's going to be a list and i'm certain it'll be the typical reasons what are those typical reasons uh he was abusive He was emotionally unavailable. Let me see. What's some more? Uh, oh, if you're married, it was irreconcilable differences. I always ask the question, uh, what the hell is that? Because there is a definition with no definition. There's a name with no definition at all. It's just a name. Irreconcilable difference. What does that mean? That's a loaded statement loaded with what it's loaded no doubt but loaded with what uh let me think of a few more 
he wasn't sexually satisfying, meaning he didn't satisfy you sexually. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. All right. Uh, let me see. Is there any more? Maybe you can add some in the comment section for me. Uh, what is my point? My point is, if you're looking for an excuse to not make a relationship work, trust me, you will find it. And this goes on both sides. But again, as I said, ladies, I'm talking to you tonight. Uh, guys, I'll be talking to you going forward. Because when I talk to you guys, I'm talking to me. Because we are the same. We're both men. We're all men. The same problems that affect one affects others in different ways. Some more than others, some less than others. But hey, man, listen. We're all affected in this country under the narratives. Because this country does not promote relationship. Certainly not healthy ones. And it definitely does not promote marriage. Oh, you can forget that. You can forget that. It does not promote that at all. And ladies, um, <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. Thank you, Gail. He was not. He was not home enough. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. He was not home enough for me and our children. That's good. Um, that's a loaded statement, but it's a it's an understandable statement nonetheless, because either he was if he wasn't home enough, where was he? Maybe he was working, right? I know some guys right now that work 60, 70, 80 hours a week. They're never home. I know some guys that have worked those kind of hours for years and had whole families. One of those individuals is on my stream right now, my friend, Fred. Fred knows what it's like to work 75, 80 hours a week, miserable on the road. He's a truck driver. And some of you guys out there that are truck drivers, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You see your truck and your truck seat and your truck bed and your truck steering wheel and your truck tires during your pre-trip and your truck tra trailer more than you see your kids and your wife right now. And all of what you're sending your wife is money, Western Union. She sees the money, but she never sees you. So that's a good quote. That's a good statement, Gail. It's a loaded one, but it's a very good statement. Because some of you guys are not home because you running around being a whoremonger male. But that's not the subject tonight. Again, the subject tonight is whataboutism. I'm talking to the ladies tonight. I'm just setting you guys up for the going forward for the conversations that I will be having with us but ladies what about is again this has become a knee-jerk reaction for the modern woman today in terms of conversations concerning the talking points coming from men the behaviors deflection shaming tactics or any other attempt to move the goalpost is a consistent reaction whether she should be traditional versus modern according to the date to today's standards is the cheesecloth and i will tell you ladies it is cheesecloth why do i use cheesecloth as the as the example if you ever go into the jungle do you know how they catch tigers and uh leopards and dangerous animals in the jungle in africa you would be surprised how they trap these animals you would think they'd have to use a lot of strong rope and cable and a lot of strong men to get them. You would be surprised how they trap these animals. The most dangerous animals in the world. They trap them with what's called a cheese cloth. Is it cheese? No. It's a very thin cloth of material that surrounds the perimeter of where these animals reside. Their pride. They are so unfamiliar with this perimeter that's being surrounded around them, they become afraid and they stay inside the perimeter, not realizing that all they have to do is kick the cheesecloth and it would break and they would be free. They're brought into captivity on what is a, a perceived threat, 
on what is a perceived barrier that they cannot penetrate. And ladies, you are behind a cheesecloth that you don't perceive as something that you can break. What is that cheesecloth? That is the narrative that's going throughout the society, not just in the United States, but all over the world that has families broken apart and have many of you ladies, irregardless of your ethnicity, women in general, black women in particular, you are behind a cheesecloth trapped like a caged animal with a narrative that tells you something that keeps you away from creating community in your own cities, in your own states, in your own towns, once you become celebrities, once you become actresses, once you become successful, once you get your PhDs, once you get your doctorates and your masters and all these other accolades that you get, once you get your big home and your red bottoms and your Birkin bags and your pocketbooks and your Gucci bags and your Fendi bags and all of the bags that you have, you don't realize that the bags you actually carry don't have a name. The bags you really carry are the bags that no man wants to carry. And that is the bags of independence, the bags of I don't need a man, the bags of whataboutism. When you're then challenged with toxic behavior and instead of taking accountability, you'd rather argue and fight with the men who share your reflection in particular, women in general, men in general. When is this supposed to stop? These conversations and talking points can end today. They can end next month. They can end in the next six months. They can end within the next year. But there will have to be some drastic changes on both sides. But since men determine relationships and marriage and you, ladies, you determine access to your body and childbirth. Since that is the case and that you don't marry men, but marry men, men indeed marry you. You don't marry men. I, I don't know what you've been told, but uh, uh, ladies, many of you have been lied to. You really have been lied to, truly have been lied to. And you believe the lie now. You literally believe it. You believe wholeheartedly the lie. And as a result, you move, you're, you move in the earth as if you have leverage. You move in the earth as if you can decide what happens next as it relates to relationships and marriage. And in reality, the truth, not the lie, the truth is that you have no control over neither marriage nor relationships. So what is this what aboutism? Where does it get you? If everything is what about, what about, what about, which is a deflecting statement and tactic to remove yourself from taking accountability for any toxic behavior is to cast the blame on the person that's talking to you. It's really designed to shut the individual down. It's not designed for you to take accountability. It's not designed for you to become better. It's not designed for any of that. It's designed for you to shut the other person down and to end the conversation. That's why you say, what about? And all of you ladies do it. You all do it. What about, what about, what about, what about what? What about your future? What about the fact that you're aging? What about the fact that you're aging out? What about the fact that you're 50, 40, 30, 35, 60, like Vivica Fox, and you have no husband and you have no children? What about that? I mean, if we want to join the what about religion under pastor or bishop, what about? then let's join that church, but let's talk about the real whatabouts. What about your future? As a, uh, as a woman walking in the earth uncovered, unprotected. Hey, you heard me say in other streams in the past, you have some options. The way this world is going, they've given you ladies many options. I'm not gonna tell you they're the most healthiest options, but man, they're options nonetheless. You could always go into compound living. For those of you that don't know what the definition of compound living is, uh, it means you can move in with multiple women and you all can share a house or an apartment or a condo or 
you know, a townhouse and, you know, share the bills and share the rent. And these five or six of you in the same house with five bedrooms or four bedrooms or whatever. And, you know, watch Netflix and chill. And each of you got cars in the driveway or parked on the side of the road in front of the house. And, you know, you can finish your life out that way. But I will tell you this. You will need more than just yourself. Some of you ladies saying, no, I don't need nobody. I'll make $150,000 a year. Well, good for you because you're going to need all 150000 of it. I promise you that. You're going to need all $150,000 of it. And as a single woman, you've heard me say this also in previous streams. You will need $2.5 million in disposable income at the age of 60 if you're alone. You will need that. You will need that. That means for the last 20 to 25 years of your life, you would have had to earn $50,000 a year and you would have had to save all $50,000. Now, I know I, I'm not talking about pay your car note with the $50,000. No, I'm not talking about pay your rent with the $50,000. I'm not talking about buy you some clothes and food with the $50,000. No, I mean, you will have to have earned $50,000 and ha have, not, have no need to touch one dime of it for 20 years for you to even be closely in position to take care of yourself as a single woman i know no one told you that uh that's because you've been lied to and uh because you've been lied to you've joined the religion of whataboutism and there's a lot of members in that church that's i mean that's a mega church it's full of women though it's it's full of women i promise you that it's full of women and um all of them are single all of them now know some of you are mad at me right now it's okay you are a member of that same church yeah you you are a member of that same church you while you're angry with me you are a member of that same church what position do you hold? Are you in the choir? Are you singing? Are you singing all the praises of the women who who are members of the what about is religion? Is that your position in the church? Are you the usher welcoming people into that mindset? What position do you hold in that church? Because the what about is religion is huge amongst women in general, black women in particular. And it's the it's the recipe for disaster. It's the recipe for disaster. Absolutely recipe for disaster. Why is it a recipe for disaster? I'm glad you asked. It's the obsessive need, as you heard me mention earlier, the obsessive need to avoid accountability. At best in confirming that the discussion discussions that men are having today are not only relevant, it confirms, it confirms, ladies, that the conversations that men are having all over the country, outside of the country, and all over social media. How can everybody say the same thing or something similar and all of them just simply hate you? Nah, man. Nah. We were put on this earth by nature for you. And guess what, ladies? I know you don't believe it. I know you think you can do it all by yourself. I know. I know. But you were put on the earth for us. <laughs> women in general, black women in particular, you were put on this earth for us and we were put on this earth for you. You know, that's why you live so comfortably in the earth that you live on. It was made safe for you to move about freely with, without the fear of, of danger without the fear of harm in most cases for the most part because of men making it safe your borders are safe because of military military is is populated by men your police departments in your local cities are populated for the most part by men and even if there are women when you call 911 you expect men to show up there wasn't a team of women that built the roads there wasn't a team of women that built the buildings. There wasn't a team of women that laid the tracks for railroads. 
There wasn't a team of women that built the cars and manufactured the vehicles that you drive in. There wasn't a team of women that set up the power grids that control the electricity that powers this country. It wasn't a team of women. Do you get my point, ladies? What about that? What about that? And at what point does the need for a man in your life becomes an important factor in your life and not sim simply in your own mind <laughs> you know a treat but not a necessity at what point at what point i mean that i've said in times past that 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 loud noise that downstairs in your house uh it forces you to recognize the importance of a man especially if you're there by yourself because now the only thing you're struck with is fear. And the only thing you're looking for then is your phone. Hoping that your index finger works. So that you can dial those three digits on your keypad. You know, the nine, the one, and the one. What about that? What about that? You know? What about that? Here's some demographics about black single mothers. Who many of them have subscribed to the whataboutism religion. The number of families in 2022, I want you to pay attention to this. The number of families in uh, 2022, there were about 4.15 million black families with a single mother, which is an increase from 1990. Taking into consideration that all stats are updated every 10 years, yeah, no, not two years, not three, not four, not five. Every 10 years. Every 10 years. The proportion of children. I want you to pay attention to this. The proportion of children. In 2021, 50.6% of black children lived with one parent compared to 21.8% of white children. Ah, I want you to think about that. I want you to look at those numbers. Again, I said two plus two is four. You can accept the two of the four. Math will not lie and facts are stubborn. In 2021, I'm going to read that again. In 2021, 50.6% of black children lived with one parent. Compared, compared, listen, to 21.8% of white children. That's a significant significant split between the two i know what some of you are probably saying right now in your effort to avoid what i'm saying you're saying well don't compare us to white women all right okay okay but needless to say again like i said facts are stubborn even if you decide you don't want to believe it it won't change because of your disbelief let's continue birth rates let's look at that Birth rates. According to government statistics, 72% of black babies are born to unmarried mothers, which is higher than any other group. 72% of black babies are born to unmarried mothers, which is higher than any other group. Let's look at poverty. Single black mothers are more likely to be poor than married mothers, even after a decline in child poverty. They are also more likely to pass that poverty on to their children. Oh, man, oh, man. Let's stop right there. I know some of you can relate to that. I certainly know that I can. I certainly know that I can. I'll use myself as the example if it'll make you feel better. And if it'll make you understand what I'm saying to you. If it'll make the pill go down easier, I'll use myself as an example. When I was growing up. My family, we didn't have money at all. We were poor, no doubt, no doubt. Very poor, very poor. I can recall getting my sneakers at the end of the aisle of the supermarket at that time called Food Town. You know those really bright white sneakers that look like they have rubber on the bottom of them, but if you put them on and somebody chase you, you could probably get away because you'd, you'd slide all the way to wherever you had to go if you could hold your balance. Some of you can relate to that if you're my age. Some of y'all remember the government cheese, right? You know, the one that 
the, the cheese that made the best macaroni and cheese <laughs> on the planet you remember that cheese right yeah you remember the hanger in the tv antenna to get reception you remember that right there was no remote control you remember that you remember potluck where your mama just put out all kinds of food she make that made that week into one pot and kind of stirred it all up and that became your dinner remember that <laughs> some of y'all remember the sugar sandwiches right i don't know, some of y'all probably don't remember that you're probably saying man i ain't go that far i didn't go that deep bro uh charles <laughs> i wasn't that poor uh, okay but i'm just letting you i'm telling you my life i remember sugar sandwiches i remember mayonnaise sandwiches i remember mustard sandwich i remember i remember ketchup sandwiches man i remember just simply a wish sandwich you know what you know what the wish sandwich was you wish there was some meat in between it why is all of that important and why am i using no myself as the example because i came up in a house with single parents that's my point single mothers single women no man that's my point and if he was present he was in and out you understand ladies times are much more difficult today much more difficult today and much more difficult for you to survive under this mindset that you have you know what about ism that religion is failing you and the lies have done you no justice inflation is higher it costs more to survive it costs more to live at best your survival depends on two incomes at best at best you understand why this is important that's why i used myself as the example that's why I use myself as an example. Because because here's the thing. If you don't understand this, then we'll lose a whole entire different generation under the same narrative. Under the same narrative. It won't change. Single parenthood, understand this so that you don't think I'm insensitive and I don't understand because I do. Single parenthood can occur for many different reasons. It can occur for many reasons, including divorce, of which you heard me mention 85 to 90% of all divorces that are filed are filed by you ladies. But that's only one reason a woman can end up a single parent. There's a few different reasons why it can happen that is beyond her control and for those of you ladies who are single parents uh under the examples that i'm going to read next i'm not talking to you in fact my heart goes out to you i'm talking to ladies modern women today women in general black women in particular who make the decision to dissolve their relationships based on the stupidest things and the stupidest frivolous reasons only to find themselves thrusted into old age by themselves for the for the examples i'm going to express next i'm not talking to you ladies here's the other reasons mothers are again more likely to be married uh single black mothers are more likely to be poor than married mothers as a single mother again as i mentioned divorce is one of the reasons here's the other reason death for those of you ladies who have lost your husbands my condolences to you my condolences to you that's something beyond your control for those of you ladies who have been abandoned because you just simply <laughs> married the wrong dude and he just for no apparent reason whatsoever just decided you know eh, i'm tired of this i'm tired of you and i'm out of here my heart goes out to you too i think there are some things and there are some steps that you could have taken to avoid that outcome no doubt 
No doubt about it. I'll, t- I'll deal with that in another stream. Um, and single person adoption. There's another situation. Um, historically, though, single parenthood was also common due to mortality rates from war. Again, that's outside of your control. Disease. Maternal mortality. That's, again, outside of your control to some extent. So if that's you, ladies, I'm not talking to you. I'm not talking to you. My heart goes out to you. I will deal with where I believe you could have, uh, that many of you that have gone through it, I can't reverse the hands of time. But for those of you ladies who, who, who have not in, encountered those kind of circumstances, uh, I will be doing a stream in the, in the future where I'll be dealing with those kind of issues to help you avoid those kind of circumstances before you encounter them. I have uh, I have granddaughters. I have uh, I have a wonderful wife. I have a wonderful mother. Um, so for those of you trolls who want to say I hate women again, I have to recap and kind of debunk you. Uh, you're going you just miss me with that because uh, I love women. I have beautiful women in my life. Uh, I don't know who you have and I don't know what experiences you have experienced <laughs> to come up with those analogies <laughs> with these talking points. But <laughs> I'll pray for you. You know, I'll pray for you. But um, my stream is to help you. My stream is to give you something that you can take away from that you can perhaps do some self and analyst analyzing of yourself. Uh, some retrospect, introspect, I should say, and uh, see where perhaps you can, where you had some missteps because we all have them. And then you can say, you know what? Instead of me stepping to the left, because I always step to the left, I think I'll, I'll try to step to the right a little bit this time, you know, and see if we can get some better outcomes. Because at the end of the day, as I've always said, we're better together than we are apart. We just are, and there's nothing that's going to change that. Not this narrative. Not this ridiculous, sick society that we live in, who does not, which does not promote family at all. Not in the traditional sense. No, sir. No, sir. And I know many of you know it, even though you're being silent about it. And it's affecting your children right now. Some of you don't even know your children right now. You have no idea that they're not who you gave birth to. They've already been changed by the narrative, by this society. They've already been changed. They come back home to you in the costume that they know you identify with. And when they leave you, they have an entirely different costume that they put on. I don't know how many of you are comfortable with that reality. But you can bet your bottom dollar it is a reality. Again, I'm only going to tell you the truth. That's all I'm going to do. That's all I'm ever going to do on this channel. But again, with that being said, I hope that you took something away from this uh, stream tonight. Um, In the ocean of foolishness. And I mean a huge ocean of foolishness that you can find plentiful on social media on every social media platform. Uh, I want to be one of those channels that don't reflect the foolishness. I know you want to be entertained. I know, I know. And and I promise you, (laughs) I'm I'm a work in progress. I'm going to do, I'm going to try some different things to get the same message across to you in a more entertaining kind of way. But I will promise you this, you won't forget this channel because This is one of the channels that will stand out amongst the thousands, hundreds of thousands that's on YouTube and Facebook. There's nothing productive whatsoever in mass on Facebook to help anyone. And there's nothing productive in mass on YouTube to help anyone. So the few channels that tend to be serious and tend to kind of sit you down and make you think 
and get you in your emotions a little bit, whether it be you, you're in your, your emotions of anger or you're in your emotions of sadness or you're in your emotions of happiness. My channel is intended to do all three. And uh, for those of you that have rocked with me all this time, you find value in what I discuss and what I talk about, irregardless of how I say it or the tone that I say it in. Uh, I'm expecting that we're all adults and I'm expecting that adults can take it how it comes. I will tell you this with Charles Chambliss on Let's Talk About It Now. Uh, you, you are getting what you see. I'm not so far removed from how I deliver and how I speak uh, because we're in danger. Our communities, not just in one state, but in all 50 plus states and beyond. We are in trouble. We are in trouble, man. We are in trouble. Ladies, you are in grave danger. Grave danger. So, again, with that being said, I, I hope this sunk down deep inside of many of you that hear this stream. Again, uh, as you come into the building, hit the subscribe button, hit the share button, hit the bell notification. You know, because YouTube has this funny thing about blocking your notifications. And, you know, you know, the buffoonery is at an all time high. So do your do your do your diligence on your side to support the channel. And again, if you feel if you should feel so so led to support the channel, you can support me via Cash App, capital C, capital G, 4033. And with whatever you contribute, I appreciate your support. If nothing more than your ear, I I appreciate that. With that being said, again, I'm your I'm your host, Charles Chambliss. This has been another episode of Let's Talk About It. Our subject title tonight, What About Ism? <laughs> the knee-jerk reaction of the modern-day woman. Until next time, folks, have a blessed and wonderful night. With that being said, we are out. Have a good night, folks.